Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to deal with Chaucer's contemporaries or major authors of the age of Chaucer. So we have poets as well as prose writers during this period. Uh, you know that Chaucer also wrote some prose besides poetry. And if you look at the major poets of the age of Chaucer, we have John Gower, William Langland, John Barber and so on. And if you look at prose writers, we have John Wycliffe, John Mandeville and so on. So first, let's have a look at the major poets of the age of Chaucer. We'll begin with John Gower. Chaucer respected and admired Gower and his works. Gower was not just a contemporary of Chaucer. He was also a friend, a close associate and he was also Chaucer's chief rival in poetry. John Gower was also a lawyer. He was a trilingual poet who wrote in three languages, French, Latin and English. And you all know that it was a period when English was not considered suitable for literature. Why? Because it was a language of the people. So you can see that Gower began writing in French. Then he also wrote in Latin. Then he wrote in English as well. Even though he had written a series of ballads, he is remembered primarily for three major epic poems and they are Speculum Meditandus, which he wrote in French, Vox Clementis, written in Latin and Confessio Amantis, a work in English. His first major work that is Speculum Meditandus, which was written around 1376 and that was the initial period of Gower's literary career. Now, if you look at the title, the first title was Mirror de Lord. That is the first title of Speculum Meditandus was Mirror de Lord. Then he later changed the title to Speculum Hominis and then finally to Speculum Meditandus. And that was to fit with the titles of his later works. His later works are Vox Clamantis and Confessio Amantis. So he just wanted to rhyme with these two works. That is why he finally changed the title to Speculum Meditandus. Now this work is an Anglo-Norman poem or it is a French verse written in octosyllabic lines. It's written in 12 line stanza. So that was popular among French moral writers of the period. So you know that Gower's work was considered moral, uh, political, religious and historical. So he was also one of the moral writers of the period and 12 line stanza was common among the French moral writers. And the 12 line stanza is known as Heliland's Trophy. Now this is an allegorical poem. Now allegory means it's a work that conveys a hidden meaning which use uh, symbolic characters and events. So if you take uh, Spencer's Fairy Queen, that is an allegory. So this is also an allegory of sin. And the major theme of this work is man's salvation. Now, if you look at Speculum Meditandus, it is divided into three unequal parts and it describes the development of sin, the vices and virtues and the remedy available to man with a special appeal to the blessed Virgin Mary. Let's move on to the second major work of John Gower that is Vox Clementis which was written in Latin and it is supposed to be written in 1370. And Vox Clementis means a clamoring voice. It is a dream allegory. Hope you all remember the dream allegories written by Chaucer because dream allegory is a popular genre during the Middle Age. And here we have Vox Clementis again in 
the form of dream vision also known as dream allegory and this work is written in elegiac couplets and it consists of seven books now in the first book there is a description of peasants revolt of 1381 see that was a period of outbreak of rebellion which is also known as the peasants revolt or rat tailors rebellion or the great uprising of 1381 and in this work uh, Gower gave a vivid account of this revolt and that is in the first book he gave this description and in the remaining six books it talks about the various problems of society including the uh, political and uh, ecclesiastical issues. Now this work is also known as an estate satire which is a genre of writing common during the middle ages and uh, as you know feudal system prevailed during that period and there were three medieval estates the clergy those who prayed the nobility those who fought and lastly the peasantry those who worked so these were the major social classes of the time the hierarchical structure of the medieval society and Vox Clamantis is an estate satire because it satirizes these three estates of that time. Next work of John Gower is Confessio Amantis which he wrote in English and he probably completed this work in 1390 and Confessio Amantis is considered his first major work in English. Earlier he wrote in French and Latin now this is his first major work in English. Now this work consists of eight books and 141 stories or tales. So this is comparable to the Canterbury Tales of Chaucer and uh, D. Cameron of Boccaccio. You know that the Canterbury Tales is a collection of stories which is modeled on Boccaccio's D. Cameron which is again a collection of stories. So John Gower's works, sorry, Confessio Amantis can also be compared to Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales and Boccaccio's D. Cameron. And these 141 stories vary in length and diverse origin, which means it has different sources. And the main source of Gower's work is Ovid's Metamorphosis. Now, this work is written in octosyllabic couplets. And as I stated earlier, Confession of Mantis means the lover's confession. So it details a confession of a man's, the aging lover, to the priest of Venus named Genius. So it is a confession of a man's to Genius. And it explores the theme of Christianity. Hope you all remember Chaucer's Troilus and Crusade, which is dedicated to Gower. And he added a line, O oh, moral goer, this book I direct to thee. And this work, that is Confessio Amantis, is a written tribute to Chaucer. So you can find at the close of this work, he made the character of Venus praising Chaucer. So this is how Chaucer and Goa devoted poems to each other. Chaucer uh, dedicated his work Troilus and Crusade to Gower and you can find Gower praising Chaucer in his work Confessio Amantis. Also Shakespeare's Pericles is based on Gower's Confessio Amantis. So Gower himself appears as a character at the beginning of that play. So he appears as a chorus. So Gower appears as a chorus in Shakespeare's play Pericles. And according to Confessio Amantis prologue, it was composed at the request of Richard II. So Richard II was a monarch of England during that period and wrote this work at the request of Richard II. So these are the major epic poems of John Gower, Speculum Meditandus, written in French, Vox Clamantis in Latin and Confessio Amantis in English. And it is also known that Gower became blind seven years before his death. Chaucer died in 1400 and Gower died eight years later that is in 1408. So that's all about John Gower. 
the contemporary of Chaucer.